This is a community-supported legal education channel. Find out how you can support our mission at the links in the description below. So I'm really curious what's happening in this case, and I wanted to go over this. This was filed a few weeks ago. There is, this is a contested motion because whenever you see one of these motions, especially like a motion to dismiss, and you see a date and time on it, that's because it's a contested motion and the judge is prepared to hold a hearing. They don't always hold hearings, but they, they may occasionally hold a hearing. So Crytek is making a motion to dismiss their case against SIG without prejudice, which means it preserves Crytek's claims and they can be filed again. And they write, Crytek based its primary claims in this case on multiple public statements made by SIG indicating the release of Squadron 42 as a standalone game with a release set for the first half of 2020. Because this fact is central to Crytek's primary claims, Crytek seeks to voluntarily dismiss its claims without prejudice, without prejudice to refiling those claims again upon actual release of Squadron 42. No efforts taken to date will be lost, and no legally cognizable prejudice will occur. Now, wait a second. I thought there was a heck of a lot more to this case than just Squadron 42. I thought that they said that even though SIG had licensed Amazon's Lumberyard, which includes Crytek, or is based on Crytek, or is the CryEngine, I mean, I thought that they were saying that they, that, that they, SIG, had signed an exclusive license agreement or something with Crytek and therefore they weren't allowed to move to Amazon Lumberyard and they weren't allowed to use the trademarks of saying we use CryEngine and all that. That's going to come into this later, so. No efforts taken to date will be lost and no legally cognizable prejudice will occur. I guess they mean to opposing party. Crytek's requested relief will promote judicial economy by allowing all claims to proceed as a unit once the Squadron 42 claims become fully ripe upon SIG's release of that game. This case has been marked by a pattern of SIG saying one thing in its public statements and another in litigation. For example, at the outset of this case, SIG had publicly claimed it had switched to using the Lumberyard engine for both Star Citizen and Squadron 42, but was forced to confirm during this litigation that no such switch had taken place. Okay. They say that the sentence Crytek makes much of the fact that the code is the same. I don't know if there's more to that statement, but that's what they cited. That doesn't seem to say what they say it said. The fact that SIG denied Crytek the credits to which it was due under the party's game license agreement without actually switching game engines is the basis for Crytek's credits claim in this case. Credits? So I'm, I'm assuming they mean like credits in the, like, the beginning credits and maybe like end game credits and when you go to the settings menu and you choose credits for this game that's what they're talking about yes uh, if i remember correctly that's part of it um so that they then get the publicity that's associated with using their engine okay Similarly, prior to this case, SIG was actively communicating that it was preparing to release Squadron 42 as a standalone game, which actions would constitute another breach of the game license agreement, referred to herein as the Squadron 42 claim. In October of 2016, SIG held its annual CitizenCon event. Chris Roberts provided updates on its games. Following that event, numerous outlets wrote about Mr. Roberts' presentation and specifically his comments about Squadron 42. In describing Mr. Roberts' discussion on Squadron 42, each outlet noted that, that Squadron 42 was a standalone single-player game being offered by SIG. Okay? And one outlet even expressly noted that Squadron 42 would be a separate game from Star Citizen. Each of these outlets left SIG's CitizenCon with the understanding that they would be separate. I, I, I don't know why they're relying on this so much. But okay. Crytek, SIG's backers, and the public were all left with that same understanding. I, I don't understand. So understanding does not necessarily create a contract, but okay, keep going. Further, 10 days after Crytek filed this suit, SIG itself seemingly confirmed the fact. In a video uploaded to its Star Citizen YouTube page showing Squadron 42 gameplay, SIG included a description of the video stating, watch the standalone Squadron 42 vertical slice gameplay demo showcasing Navy life aboard an Idris or Idris frigate 
and a rescue mission in an abandoned moon outpost. Similarly, during this litigation, SIG has consistently given the appearance that Squadron 42 would be a standalone game. Wow, they're making a whole lot about this being a standalone game. Let me start skimming. Disputing the purported impact of the Amazon license, Crytek noted its understanding that SIG would release Squadron 42 as a standalone game that is acceptable outside of the Star Citizen game, then on that information and belief, the development necessary to achieve the result have already been started. I, I'm still really, really hazy on what's going on here because when we originally looked at the game license agreement, it looked like it was a standard game license agreement that did not create an enforceable promise that uh, uh, that that SIG would release Squadron 42 on behalf of Crytek. Like SIG has not made an agreement that I know of that that binds them to using Crytek's engine. Rather, it sounded like Crytek was trying to get SIG to come back to Crytek's engine and be responsible to Crytek for license fees and, and revenue or profits or whatever, a share of whatever because they were using the engine, and instead they chose to use a different engine through Amazon Lumberyard, which also was based on CryEngine. I mean, that's my understanding. I, I could be wrong. I've been wrong before. I was wrong about the Home, the Housing for Older Persons Act when we did that analysis, and I had to eat crow. And I did so in the same stream, and I even left it in the video. Okay, here's our interrogatories. Okay, what are interrogatories? Fine. We can learn something about the law, everyone, on the Legal Education YouTube channel. In October, Crytek served an interrogatory on SIG. An interrogatory is a discovery request. So you have the duty in a civil case to not only preserve evidence, but also hand that evidence over, even if it is evidence against you, if the opposing party properly requests it. And it is relevant and there isn't some other exception or or rule that you could use to get rid of the the request. So interrogatories are written requests for discovery or, or requests for written statements in answers to written questions. You have things like a request for admission where you simply answer yes or no in writing. You have interrogatories which are in writing statements and then you have depositions, which are uh, verbal interviews, kind of like a, a cross-examination or direct examination, but in a private setting with a court reporter present, usually. Can't imagine why you wouldn't have a court reporter there, but usually you have a court reporter there. So they, they asked, state whether Squadron 42 is currently being developed to be released as a standalone game, and if so, state the date that decision was made, when you began implementing that decision, when whether you secured advice of counsel with respect to that decision. I don't know if you're allowed to say that, if they have to say whether they secured advice of counsel. I know they can't say what advice they secured from counsel, but... Identify all documents and communications concerning that decision, and identify the three persons most knowledgeable of same. SIG served its verified response, stating that SIG had not decided how the game would be released, and that is redacted. While this came as a surprise to Crytek, and undoubtedly will come as a surprise to the public who has prepaid for Squadron 42, assuming the truth of SIG's response, Crytek's Squadron 42 claim is not yet ripe. Following SIG's response, Crytek and SIG discussed this issue and attempted to reach an agreed resolution and path forward, but when it became clear that the parties would be unable to reach agreement, the parties promptly prepared and filed their joint stipulation regarding the briefing for this motion. While SIG's ultimate intent to release Squadron 42 as a standalone game remains unclear, it is now equally clear through SIG's interrogatory response. Accordingly, rather than press forward a case that is not likely to resolve the full dispute between the parties, Crytek seeks to voluntarily dismiss its claims without prejudice and can refile again once SIG has in fact released Squadron 42. This approach will conserve judicial and party resources by allowing all claims between the parties to be fully adjudicated in a single proceeding with a single round of discovery. How, wait, how long has this case been going on? Hasn't this been like two or three years now this case has been going on? This was filed in 2017. We are now into the third year, more than two years, less than three, it sounds like. But we're getting very close to the now, in, in, you know, the third or fourth year of this litigation. And Crytek just entered the litigation on this 
themselves. Like, this wasn't SIG suing Crytek, and then Crytek comes back and says, oh, well, you're also releasing Squadron 42. No, Crytek made the claim. And this is how this is how great Crytek's claims have been, that they seem to not have anything yet. They seem to have filed this so prematurely that they don't even have anything to, to go, they can't go forward with their claim yet, so now they have to backpedal. Federal Rule Civil Procedure 41A2 allows a plaintiff pursuant to an order of court and subject to any terms and conditions the court deems proper to dismiss an action without prejudice at any time. Well, I like how there's the little end there at any time, but it does say you need an order of court, you need terms and conditions, then it's at any time. So it's like right 40% of the time, all the time. Motions for voluntary dismissal are addressed to the court's sound discretion and the court's order will not be disturbed unless the court has abused its discretion. So the appeal standard is abuse of discretion. A voluntary dismissal under Rule 41A2 should be granted unless a defendant can show that it will suffer some plain legal prejudice as a result. Uh, how about the prejudice of having adjudicated the case to this point? I don't know. At least I'd be arguing it if I was their attorney. The stage of litigation and the moving party's diligence in moving for voluntary dismissal are also factors. SIG will suffer no legal prejudice from a voluntary dismissal of the case. Legal prejudice is prejudice to some legal interest, some legal claim, or some legal argument, and focuses on their rights and defenses available. So they've quickly said, it's not going to suffer no prejudice, it's only going to suffer no legal prejudice. Legal prejudice is not established because a dispute remains unresolved or by the mere threat of future litigation. Here, SIG will suffer no legal prejudice because the parties will both be in the same position in any future litigation following the release of Squadron 42, with the only difference being this, this redacted difference. So there is some kind of difference. Thus, each of SIG's legal interests, claims, and arguments would remain intact, as would its rights and defenses. The parties will effectively resume this litigation following the release of Squadron 42. SIG cannot demonstrate any plain prejudice warranting denial of Crytek's motion in such circumstances. Furthermore, all effort expended to date will be equally useful to any resumed case. It is well settled in the Ninth Circuit that the expenses incurred in defending against a lawsuit does not amount to legal prejudice. Wow. Okay, so if they have a losing argument and they expect that the judge is going to rule against them, then the opposing side could possibly ask for um, attorney's fees because the opposing side is the winning side. They can ask for attorney's fees. But dismissing without prejudice is not the other side winning, right? It just sort of puts the yeah. argument on pause. So it seems like it's a delay tactic, possibly, yeah. in order to avoid paying the lawyer's fees for this round of, of what has yet to be adjudicated. I'm not sure that they don't have to pay lawyer's fees for this round, though. A dismissal with prejudice would definitely bring up a... A, a attorney's fees issue and a fee shifting issue but absent bad faith a mere contract dispute dismissed without prejudice probably doesn't involve paying the other side's attorney's fees maybe the judge might order it and we haven't seen sig's response yet let's see this was filed on the third we should have sig's response at some point let's see what they say. Both the stage of the litigation and Crytek's diligence support granting Crytek's motion. Fact discovery remains open. Neither party has taken a deposition. Trial remains six months away. As soon as Crytek learned the position SIG was taking, redacted, Crytek raised the possibility of dismissal with SIG and began working with SIG to try and agree on a fair and efficient approach. Um, I don't know if we what, if what we have is the actual redacted part here, but we do have something new here that I'm going to show you in a moment. As soon as it became clear that this was not possible, Crytek filed its motion. So SIG is opposed to the without prejudice dismissal. I think they'd like to see a with prejudice dismissal. SIG will not be prejudiced. It's really relatively early, etc. And then, of course, no condition should be set on the dismissal. Through the party's discussions on Crytek's intent to seek voluntary dismissal, SIG indicated to Crytek that it would stipulate to voluntary dismissal if Crytek agreed to five conditions. 
Crytek's breach of contract claims will be dismissed with prejudice. So here's, here's SIG's conditions. These are SIG's conditions. Crytek's breach of contract claims will be dismissed with prejudice. SIG's obligation to provide trademark and copyright notices will be terminated. Crytek's copyright claim for Squadron 42 will be dismissed without prejudice, and any discovery and work product from the litigation may be used in future litigation. Crytek will release SIG from all claims from the beginning of time through the effective date, provided that the release will not cover any claims arising from the future release of Squadron 42 outside of Star Citizen, and the payment by Crytek of SIG's attorney's fees in the amount of $500,000. Crytek agrees to number three, but the others should be rejected. So Crytek wants to eat its cake and have it too. It wants to get the dismissal without prejudice, but not have to pay for it, not have to dismiss the contract claims, and not have to release SIG from claims generally. At the outset, SIG's first proposed condition for dismissal without prejudice Wait, it said with prejudice. With. With prejudice. And then it says first proposed condition is without prejudice. That's, that's not correct. It is a demand for dismissal with prejudice. Why would you phrase it like this? At the outset, SIG's first proposed condition for dismissal without prejudice is not such a condition at all. That, that's not what it said. They just contradicted themselves and then said, like, tried to make a legal argument out of something that they made up, at least in their own words. One of Crytek's principal claims in this case is that SIG is in breach of the game license agreement by releasing Squadron... Yes, we got that. This breach claim is exactly what Crytek is seeking to dismiss without prejudice. In order to await the actual release, Crytek also has a claim for breach of the GLA based on SIG's failure to give credits. This claim involves many of the same... Yes, we've read all of this. SIG's second condition, like the first, is overreaching and fundamentally ignores that Crytek is requesting dismissal simply for purposes of judicial economy. See, I don't think so. Does anyone else really think they're just dismissing for judicial economy? Why couldn't they make a motion to stay the case until Squadron 42 is released? You could do that too. I think, I, th I think they'd like to get the case over with so then if it turns out that they're wrong, then they don't bring the case again. Whereas if it turns out that SIG is right and Crytek has already dismissed the case, well then, well, there's no case to bring and you can't get your attorney's fees back. If the case stays open, then SIG could probably still get their attorney's fees back at the end of this thing. There is no way Crytek will abandon its credit claims in the context of the instant motion. This really seems like Crytek wants, wants two different things that conflict with each other at the same time. As for SIG's fourth condition, seeking a release of all claims through the effective date, it is unclear exactly how this substantively differs from SIG's first condition above and for the same reason it should be rejected. Finally, SIG's condition of fees should also be rejected first, or back to first. The expense of litigation would not be excessive nor in any way duplicative. Once Squadron 42 is released, the parties will pick up where they left off. Except that they're leaving off the whole thing that the parties will pick up where they left off only if Crytek refiles. The discovery done by the parties to date is fully usable. SIG was diligent in seeking to move to dismiss. Once Crytek had a chance to consider SIG's verified interrogatory response, it promptly raised this matter with SIG and engaged in negotiations to determine. So once Crytek realized they were wrong, they tried to dismiss the case, is what it sounds like. Maybe, maybe the Ninth Circuit considers that diligence. I'm looking forward to seeing the court's order. Even if the court should choose to condition dismissal on the payment of costs and attorney's fees, the defendant should only be awarded attorney's fees for work which cannot be used in future litigation. And that, now we're starting to get to it. None of the work done by the parties to date would be rendered useless, so therefore no fees, according to Crytek. Wow. Okay. And then what have I been holding on to here this whole time? There's this interesting tweet that I came across, oh, yesterday I think it was. Remember when the law firm Skadden stopped representing Crytek? It happened a week after this email, which was May of last year. Hi, Avni. Sorry for the late reply. I've been traveling a bit. Normally, we wouldn't discuss a customer relationship. This is Amazon writing back. 
Those relationships are confidential. We take that very seriously. However, given the circumstances, we have asked SIG for an authorization to share, and they have given approval. We can confirm that, yes, Amazon did license Lumberyard to SIG in 2016, and we included CryEngine, what you licensed to us as part of that license to SIG. I'll give it a moment for that to sink in. Isn't that what this entire darn thing is about? This really, really tenuous claim that somehow SIG was using CryEngine without permission. And it turns out that they do have a license to use Lumberyard. What has happened since, the deadline for Cloud Imperium and Robert Space Industries motion shall be 117. Okay, so do we have that? Okay, here we go. Opposition regarding notice, uh, let's see, application to file document, sealed declaration, here we go. Opposition re-notice of motion and motion to dismiss filed by Cloud Imperium Games. Declaration of Ort Wine Friarmouth. We'll read this this one that is three dollars. I'm paying three dollars to download this, everyone. I'd like to take a moment to thank our patrons and our Twitch subscribers and our <laughs> sponsors on sponsors. <laughs> Yeah, these, this stuff adds up quick. We end up having a, a rather large bill when it's $3 per document. And here we go. All right, so here we have defendant's opposition to Crytek's motion for voluntary dismissal. Now we might get some answers. This action should never have been brought. Dismissal is long overdue and proper. <laughs> what would not be proper is dismissing without prejudice and without conditions. Crytek launched and maintained this attention-seeking action irresponsibly from the outset. In year three, the case docket is littered with the detritus of reckless Crytek allegations. Okay, this is a pissed off attorney. <laughs> Subject to fee shifting, thrown out as a matter of law, or dropped under pressure. These caused enormous unnecessary expense. Crytek scrambles for its parachute as the March summary judgment and June trial schedule brought final reckoning ever nearer. All of the factors applicable to the court's discretion cry out for the action's dismissal with prejudice. At the very least, the court should dismiss Crytek's credits claim with prejudice and order that the security bond be released to SIG. Crytek should not be allowed to aim its car at SIG's storefront window, stomp the accelerator, smash through, do donuts for years, then back out and drive away to maybe circle around and crash into SIG another day. Oh, wow. <laughs> He's very upset. They're very upset. Tell us how you really feel. I love it. Crytek richly deserves having its keys taken away for all time so that SIG can conduct responsible business without further interference from Crytek or its series of lawyers. The security bond, which the court generously limited in size so Crytek could make it to the end of a case it now flees, would barely cover a portion of the wreckage. The proper ending is the action's dismissal with prejudice. Any other dismissal should end with the bond being paid over to SIG. SIG's singular pretext for seeking merciful exit from this court does not even justify dismissal of the one of Crytek's existing claims at which it is aimed. The evidence has always shown that SIG entered into a separate license agreement with Amazon and since 2016 has been developing Star Citizen and Squadron 42 using the something that Amazon licensed and delivered to SIG. On top of that, from day one of this action, SIG has repeatedly pointed out that Crytek's claim that Squadron 42 cannot be released in a separate game client could not even theoretically be right because Squadron 42 has not even been released. Even pretending that the Amazon license did not exist, the game license agreement expressly defines the game as both Star Citizen and its related Space Fighter game Squadron 42, and whether content falls outside the scope of the license as whether players actually access the content through the Star Citizen game client. 
Since Squadron 42 has not been made available to players at all, a fact Crytek conceded early in Discovery, Crytek's claim is, and always has been at best, premature. The real reason Crytek wants to walk away from its claims is because Crytek can no longer delay the inevitable reckoning that its claim is and has always been meritless for at least two independent reasons. First, by suddenly seeking a dismissal without prejudice to preserve its right to refile once SIG in fact releases Squadron 42, Crytek concedes SIG's long-argued point that no breach could even theoretically occur until actual game release. Second, evidence uncovered in Discovery on the Amazon license shows that in May 2019, a year and a half after launching the action, Crytek sheepishly and belatedly emailed Amazon to ask if it had truly granted SIG a license, covering prior versions of CryEngine, including those licensed to SIG under the GLA. That. In that email, Crytek conceded that an affirmative answer would likely tank its Squadron 42 claim. Amazon confirmed that, yes indeed, it had done just that. Instead of acting responsibly, even at that late moment, Crytek persisted, fought the bond motion, and dithered another seven months before bringing this motion. Throughout this case, Crytek has sacrificed legal sufficiency for outlandish allegations designed to ignite incendiary publicity. Even as Crytek now hobbles towards the exit, it misleads the court. And in this closely watched case, that always means misleading the public by falsely claiming that SIG did not switch to Amazon Lumberyard and pretending that new information came out in Discovery about the timing and future release of Squadron 42. In fact, Nothing about the release timing of Squadron 42 has been shared with Crytek. Crytek tries to twist SIG's interrogatory response, which we read before, while Crytek suggests that the response would come as a surprise to the public who has prepaid for Squadron 42, SIG's response did not refer to how the game was marketed, but rather stated that SIG simply had not yet determined how players will access the game. It is customary for large games to reserve decisions regarding the parameters of release until closer to the release date in order to evaluate the market conditions at the time. Crytek's contention that SIG's interrogatory response is inconsistent with its prior public statements is unfounded. All right, this goes on for another 20 pages, so we're going to skim a little bit here. The court entreated counsel on January 10th to confer in finding an agreement on dismissal. Crytek's counsel acknowledged they would do so after admitting they likely would refile. Crytek's stonewall position remains without prejudice or conditions, which we just read. So they want to have some, so SIG of course wants to have some conditions. Since 2012, SIG has been developing a multiplayer video game called Star Citizen. Don't, don't I know it since 2012? I was a not a, not a backer, but I was an early pre-orderer after the Kickstarter, and I, I dared ask the community when in the world this game would be ready to play, and I got, like, flamed to heck. So, apparently, you don't ask that question. While certain playable modules of Star Citizen have been released, SIG has not yet made any part of Squadron 42 available to the public. Really? I thought there was, like, a... I thought there was a Squadron 42, like, button inside of Star... I swear I played something. I don't know. Development of these games has been supported primarily through crowdfunding. November 20th, 2012, SIG entered into the game license agreement with Crytek. SIG paid Crytek $2 million in buyout license fees for the right to use CryEngine in connection with the game and its related space fighter game Squadron 42. The game license agreement defines whether content is within the scope of the game by whether players can access the content outside of the Star Citizen game client. The license provides, quote, in the event any litigation is brought by either party in connection with this agreement, the prevailing party will be entitled to recover from the other party all reasonable costs, attorney's fees, and other expenses reasonably incurred by such prevailing party in the litigation. Crytek cashes out of CryEngine business in deal with Amazon. In 2014, reports began to surface that Crytek was experiencing serious financial problems. Starved for cash, Crytek entered into an unprecedented license agreement with Amazon. I don't know what this, what this redacted part says, but I'm assuming it has something to do with granting a license to Amazon to create their own game engine using CryEngine called Amazon Lumberyard and then license that to whoever they want with no, with no further limitations on who they can license it to. 
In February 2016, Amazon publicly announced the large launch of Lumberyard, a game engine derived from CryEngine that Amazon was making available for free, including full source code access to all Amazon Web Services customers. Following Amazon's news, Crytek effectively retired from the game engine business, shifting to a pay-what-you-want model and something. SIG switches to Amazon Lumberyard. Amazon told SIG that it was developing Lumberyard based on CryEngine. Amazon granted SIG to use. I'm assuming this says something about using the Lumberyard game engine. December 23rd, 2016, after taking multiple steps to effect a switch of its engine code to, I'm guessing, Lumberyard, under license from Amazon, SIG began displaying the trademark for Lumberyard instead of CryEngine on the opening splash screen for Star Citizen. That same day, SIG announced its switch to Lumberyard. Crytek did not object. Crytek admitted that the game license agreement does not obligate defendants to provide copyright and trademark notices for CryEngine if SIG switches to a different game engine. Crytek also conceded that it has no evidence of damages and claims no loss of profits from the removal of Crytek's credits or SIG's switch to Lumberyard. Yeah, it sounds, sounds like SIG paid for the Crytek CryEngine up front with, for $2 million or whatever, and then switched when they realized that they could get either out of or around any revenue sharing or profit sharing or whatever they had to share, they switched to Amazon Lumberyard instead, maybe even because Amazon had further developed it and it might have been more robust by then. And then Crytek is upset. In January 2016, SIG and Amazon neared an agreement. SIG announced that supporters would be able to support the development of Star Citizen by contributing funds for access to Squadron 42. Previously, SIG had included Squadron 42 only with the Star Citizen game packages. The announcement did not specify how players would access the game. Following the news, Crytek contacted SIG to raise a concern about the announcement. Crytek pointed out that the game license agreement did not authorize content released outside of the Star Citizen game client. Um, SIG then in February issued a press release clarifying that the package split does not change the fact that Star Citizen and Squadron 42 are part of the same game universe or the fact that the games are functionally connected. You will access Squadron 42 through the same game client. This was SIG's last public announcement about how players will access Squadron 42, which remains in development. A year later, Crytek files The Kitchen Sink. Crytek commenced this action on December 12th, 2017, almost a full year after SIG publicly announced its switch to Lumberyard. Crytek's initial complaint, prepared by a team of lawyers at Skadden Arps, launched a litany of contrived and baseless aspersions and claims at SIG, all smashed together in claims for copyright infringement and breach of contract. Crytek's meritless lawsuit was designed to inflict upon SIG maximum damage and unnecessary escalation of legal expense through reputational attack and scorched earth litigation tactics. SIG has spent more than two years successfully beating back Crytek's claims. Crytek has achieved none of its litigation objectives. And here they are. The failed claim. In its initial complaint, Crytek falsely accused SIG's co-founder and general counsel of engaging in a conflict of interest. After SIG produced a written conflict waiver signed by Crytek, Crytek withdrew the allegation. SIG's leading cause of action alleged that SIG violated the game license agreement by switching to a different game engine. This was dismissed by court. The court granted SIG's motion to dismiss the claim as unsupported by the plain language of the game license agreement and anathema to the concept or opposite to the concept of a license. Meanwhile, Crytek sought punitive damages dismissed by court. The court granted SIG's motion to dismiss because punitive damages are unsupported in contract disputes. That's true. I think I said that before. In its second amended complaint, Crytek added a new claim alleging that SIG violated the game license agreement by competing in the game engine business. The court granted SIG's motion to dismiss, finding that Crytek had stated no facts to support the claim. Crytek claimed that SIG violated the game license agreement's non-disclosure provisions by sharing CryEngine source code with third-party faceware technologies. 
dropped after the court ordered a bond. Crytek dropped this claim after Faceware and SIG submitted declarations from both sides denying that Faceware had ever received access to CryEngine, and Crytek admitted it had zero evidence to support its claim. Crytek claimed that SIG violated the game license agreement by failing to deliver certain bug fixes to engine and engine optimizations after SIG showed that it had tendered the code and then actually delivered it, Crytek dropped that claim. Oh, so they actually did deliver the, the, the code that was asked for. Crytek claimed that SIG violated the game license agreement by posting snippets of Cry Engine in its video series after SIG pointed out that Crytek had already published all of its code and thus could not possibly be damaged by the alleged snippets, Crytek dropped the claim. Wow. So now I think we're going to start skimming a little bit. The two remaining claims that it now seeks to dismiss are that SIG breached the game license agreement and infringed the, co the Crytek copyright by developing Squadron 42 as a standalone game. From the outset, SIG has repeatedly pointed out that Crytek's allegations regarding Squadron 42 failed to state a claim and could not possibly be right because the game license agreement expressly grants SIG the right to use CryEngine to develop Squadron 42. Yeah. So the court then eventually ordered a $2,193,298.45 bond, which is then held in escrow and then given to the prevailing party if the court decides that a prevailing party deserves their fees or costs or any part of that paid for. The court then granted Crytek's bond motion taking account for Crytek's ailing financial state and ordered them to pay only a 500,000 bond deposit, expressing concern that requiring a greater amount would jeopardize plaintiff's ability to continue to participate in the action. Crytek did deposit the $500,000. Meanwhile, Crytek learns that Amazon has given SIG a broad license agreement, then Crytek first thought as we've gone over and then we went through their filing and so they argue that the dismissal should be on terms that the court considers proper and that they believe those terms should be a with prejudice dismissal and payment of the five hundred thousand dollar bond over to sig sig expended significant time and expense to pare down crytek's meritless claims and prepare for trial Crytek has excessively delayed prosecution of this action and acted without diligence. So what does that mean? Attorneys have a due diligence duty. We have an affirmative duty. It's in our rules of professional conduct and probably somewhere else that when somebody comes to us with a claim, we can't just go to court and file a lawsuit and say, well, well, my client told me you owed him money. No, we have to do some kind of reasonable investigation. Certainly, you can't also expect the opposite. You can't expect the attorney to have every answer to everything before they file a complaint, but they should at least verify that there's something here and only pursue claims where they have some kind of, there's some kind of truth to the claims. So Crytek's attorneys should have done at least a preliminary inquiry, maybe even talking to SIG, maybe even talking to Amazon, and finding out what's going on with the license before they file. Now, what about due diligence into whether Squadron 42 had been released? Well, federal courts have something called a case or controversy requirement. Your, your case has to be ripe for judicial review, for, for federal adjudication. If it is either not ripe because you're premature, or if it has been rendered moot because something has happened and you are now past the point where you have a claim, you, you don't have a case or controversy to get into federal court. So Crytek should have known, in, in this lawyer's professional opinion, Crytek should have known that Squadron 42 wasn't released yet, and that the release of Squadron 42 in a separate game or wrong engine or without credit and all that stuff, those are all things that can be fixed by monetary relief, by going to court and getting a court to order money and then having that money paid. 
So why would they go through two plus years of litigation, intense litigation to the tune of millions of dollars of, of fees paid to their lawyers if they knew at the outset that Squadron 42 wasn't released yet and they didn't know for sure how it was going to be released? Certainly a game company making public statements is not the same as a contract. Maybe somebody who's damaged by those statements could could have but those de damage has to be ripe and not moot i don't get it i don't even see how their lawyers could have maintained this their lawyers should have looked into this and i openly question i don't have they're not making accusations that anyone has actually done something i'm questioning whether or not their lawyers actually did their due diligence because if the lawyers knew that Squadron 42 wasn't released yet, then what is what is Crytek paying their lawyers for? They're, they shouldn't be paying your lawyer to not do their job. You should be paying your lawyer to do their job. So these are valid concerns for SIG. Crytek has dragged SIG through the mud on claims based on objectively suspect evidence. Crytek forced SIG to defend itself without basis in fact, without basis in law, without any proof of damages. The litigation is in its late stages. Crytek's stated reasons for dismissal are suspect. Crytek pins its request for voluntary dismissal on SIG's interrogatory response, suggesting that SIG changed its position regarding the intended method of access to Squadron 42. I don't think they ever committed to a particular kind of, of release. I mean, are, are we really going to speak out of both sides of our mouth here? We've all seen video game companies changing the style of their release. I complain about the Epic Game Store exclusives all the time, and even though it's not illegal, it doesn't feel really great to be a consumer of video games and have to keep being forced into a, a game launcher that frankly sucks and... And, and that I don't really want to use anyway. And, I, and I'm a guy who loves the Unreal Engine, and, and I really loved Paragon, and so you might start to see why I'm a little ticked off. They canceled Paragon for Fortnite. They forced me to use a launcher I don't want to use for games that I want to play through Steam where I can still get customer service and I can still get a refund. <sighs> anyway, so no one should be expecting that game companies, you know, statements are some kind of binding legal promise. The breach of the license is not determined by SIG's thought process during development or how it may consider releasing Squadron 42. Any alleged breach depends on how players access Squadron 42. Third, Crytek has provided no valid ground to dismiss its credits claim, which Crytek does not contend pivots on how SIG intends to release, on, to release Squadron 42. So the credits claim is apparently still open. Crytek is swerving from a near-certain adverse ruling. With a summary judgment and trial deadline on the horizon, Crytek seeks to avoid a near-certain adverse ruling that the last claims are unripe, meritless, or both. Crytek admits an adverse ruling is on its way because its excuse for why the Squadron 42 claim should be dismissed, that the claim is not ripe, is one of the very adverse rulings it seeks to avoid. The court's order on the bond motion, which found merit in SIG's legal defenses, gave Crytek reason to change its tune. But as the Ninth Circuit held in the Maxim case, the fact that a party's motion for voluntary dismissal follows a court's indication of how it might rule weighs in favor of dismissal with prejudice. In sum, Taking into account SIG's effort and expense defending against Crytek's claims, the excessive delay, lack of diligence, late stage of the proceedings, Crytek's insufficient explanation for dismissal, it would be inequitable to allow Crytek to refile its claims against SIG. The court should impose reasonable conditions including dismissal and the $500,000 bond should go to Crytek and the court has the discretion to do so and it typically should include an award of attorney's fees and costs according to them. They say they can't use a lot of the work in future litigation because so much has been dismissed. They have expended tremendous effort and expense. SIG has incurred almost a million dollars in legal fees on extensive motion practice, pleadings, discovery, fact investigation, experts, a mandated settlement conference. While SIG has not filed for summary judgment, preparations are underway. These facts weigh heavily in favor of a significant fee condition. The litigation is now in its third year. Hey, I just said that too. The parties exchanged written discovery and documents, and SIG is prepared to complete its document production. 
in this late hour, voluntary dismissal without conditions would unfairly affect SIG. Crytek did not exercise diligence in moving to dismiss. This was one of their big arguments. If Crytek had truly been diligent in looking into the facts, it would never have filed this sham action out of the blue at all. If Crytek today can be believed at all, even by its own argument, Crytek should have dismissed years ago while awaiting Squadron 42's release. Yep. Yeah, that's, I think, a really, probably the strongest argument. This is not a case of a diligent plaintiff sensibly backing out early on. It is instead a study of an abusive use of litigation and publicity. For all of the above reasons, the court should dismiss Crytek's two remaining claims with prejudice. If the court is not inclined to do so, it should condition dismissal on the payment of SIG's attorney's fees and costs in the amount of $500,000 to be dispersed from the bond and the dismissal of the credits claim, at least that one, with prejudice. Boom! So, you know, the saying that, you know, for your case, like, argue the facts. And if you don't have the facts, argue the law. And if you don't have the law, bang on the desk. I yeah. feel like this did all three. Yeah. At the same time. Yeah. This was, this was uh, so far, my professional opinion, unless somebody reveals some brand new thing, which I don't see how it's possible. Like, they're supposed to be doing their due diligence. There's no brand new thing they're going to be able to bring. This was really stupid of Crytek to do this. This did nothing to help Crytek. It wasted their own money at a time when they were financially in difficulty. And and now they're going to end up owing SIG at least the $500,000. Maybe even there's a way that they're going to owe them more. I don't, I, don't, I don't see how they don't owe them more. I'm surprised they don't ask for the million dollars back and just ask for the 500,000, but I guess we'll see. Maybe maybe SIG doesn't want to have to go back after Crytek for it. Maybe they know they can't get it. Since the 500,000 is all, is all that's left, maybe Crytek doesn't have anything left. So that's what's happening there. Let us know what you think in the comments below. So that's our show, everyone. Thank you for joining me. I'm Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney, and this has been another episode of Lawful Masses, your favorite YouTube legal education and legal news channel. Thank you to all of our supporters on sponsus.com law and patreon.com slash ljfrench for your support in the month of January. Thank you to the $50 plus supporters, As Bernari, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Kyle Mudrock, Michael Pierce, Jan Negre, Spirit Bear, Daniel Perez, Snorri Wizotsky, Blackleaf, Joe Tyson, Evie, Benjamin Hightoff, Steven, Cute Grills in Your Area, and Ada. And thank you to the rest of you that will be scrolling on the screen in front of you. I love you all. I will see you in the videos that drop. I look forward to per fully producing the copyright song for you and getting that out sometime in the next few weeks or months. Love you all. I'm Leonard French. Have a good one. Bye.